Welcome back to the CSA side of Ultimate General Civil War. As promised last video, let's begin today with the army maintenance screen. The first thing one should do when building one's army is check to see what the next stage has in store for you. The Battle of First Bull Run is going to consist of one core with four brigades. We have enough space in our army to hold that already, so I won't need to spend my career point in army organization this time. Also, you can notice that there is already a significant army presence before our forces join the fight. Just like Newport News, we will be getting a large quantity of reinforcements this stage. And also like Newport News, the reinforcements are fixed, while the enemy size scales to our team. However, this time there are two groups of foes. The ones we will engage immediately that I'll call our opponents, and a group I'll call everyone else. I find that a good brigade size for this stage to match the size of our opponents, without giving too much power to everyone else, is the range of 900 to 1000 men. So let's up our two existing infantry to 1000 men, which we almost have enough 1841 Mississippis for. The remaining amount gets purchased from the armory, and the number is small enough it's no biggie to our budget. Up our cannon battery to 10 guns. We didn't capture any cannons last round, but the cost of two six-pounders isn't a problem and we will create one new 1,000-man brigade. We already have a reserve officer around who will get auto-assigned to the brigade, and we also will give them some of our captured 1842 Springfields as their weapon. Not a great gun, but it's still really early in the campaign, so that's not a problem. Though if I do find myself in a position where I want a close-range engagement, I'll try to remember to have Crocker's brigade handle it. Drop our point into politics, throw a few more funds into the chuck wagon, and we're set. A pre-battle save, and we are on our way. The Confederate Army of PGT Beauregard has deployed south of Bull Run River to guard Manassas Railroad Junction. From the other side of the river, Brigadier General Irvin McDowell is looking for a weak point to attack. Your forces are needed to guard the left flank of the Confederate Army and stop the enemy from advancing to Richmond. Also, note the icon right here. This is the bonus we get for doing the optional Newport News side battle. Each enemy brigade this round will be 5% smaller than if we had skipped the side mission. Our main forces are deployed a few miles east of this location, guarding the Manassas Railroad Junction. Bull Run River is the natural barrier between our lines and the Union Army on the other side. To protect the left flank of the Army, we need to guard all the fords. Our forces are stretched thin along Bull Run River. We do not have sufficient regiments to guard this passage, but you need to be alert for any enemy movement. McDowell may attempt to cross with a portion of his army from here. This small hill near Matthew's farm is a good position to create a defensive line in case the enemy threatens our left. Henry Hill is another strong position for our artillery and must be secured. Your orders are to defend your position and scout for enemy movements. If the Federals attack you, reinforcements will be dispatched from the southeast. General, Federal forces have been spotted on the other side of the river and will certainly try to cross it from this section. Take position on that hill to stop any attempt of the enemy to cross the stone bridge. Pay attention to this ford, which is also a possible passage for the Union Army. We do not have enough forces to guard the passages westward of your current position. You should still scout the area as the Federals may attack from this side. Matthews Hill must be defended should the Yankees attempt to breach our left flank. Delay the Yankees until you receive more reinforcements. Good luck, General. The main fight, at least for our army, will take place at the bridge. Right at the start of the stage, three infantry brigades that are only slightly larger than yours, and two cannon brigades, each of which are about two-thirds of the one I'm bringing, will come this way. To meet them, I'll be arraying my forces like this. 
with a supply wagon, general, and two infantry brigades on hold position. Also, this brigade will split a skirm group off to occupy the fortification, and this brigade will split a skirm group over to here to watch the river. The key to your brigade placement is to have the brigade's firing range cover the bridge, while making sure they aren't as close to the bridge as the fortified skirmishers are. There is a good chance that you will be microing these two brigades back and forth often to make sure they continue to be able to fire, while avoiding taking return fire from the enemy infantry themselves. Don't worry too much about the enemy cannons. Getting shot at is annoying, but all of the cannons in this stage from the Union should be short-range howitzers that will struggle to do much damage, unless they close to such short range that your own battery can start lighting them up effectively. The topmost of the three infantry brigades is going to be doing double duty. It should not start in range of the bridge, as there is no place it can sit where it won't get hit first by someone before they cross. So instead, it will sit here, and each time someone moves onto the bridge and fires on the skirmishers, this group will move down, take a shot, and then pull back. Its other job will be that any time someone tries to cross the river ford here, it will swing north to engage them from this forest. An enemy melee cavalry will spawn around 220 on the timer from here and try to cross when it thinks it can get away with it but there's also a 50-50 chance that any enemy infantry will also try and make an end around. You simply cannot let any enemy make it across this path and behind your forces unimpeded. I've never in all my games seen an enemy try to cross here. You should be able to safely ignore this path. This hill is going to be the site of a massive battle, but I'll describe it a bit more when the forces that will occupy it begin showing up. Lastly, the enemy will spawn in two large reinforcements. A 2,000-odd man brigade will join the fight at 120 remaining, and then another 2,000-odd man brigade, followed by two more cannon batteries, will show at about 50 minutes. You didn't think this would be easy, did you? In any event, the bridge and the river ford are the key elements you'll be using to swing the battle in your favor. The timer itself is variable this stage. The next phase will begin either when it runs out, you lose both objectives, or, most likely, if the left side falls so far back the game decides you need to retreat anyway, regardless of the bridge's status. In your own game, I recommend setting your cannons to hold fire, and as a demonstration why, here's my battery trying to fire at the first thing it sees. That was 10 cannons firing at a packed formation of 1100 men and hitting one guy. Both my 6 pound ordnance and the Union's 12 pounder howitzers are extremely short range artillery. Sure, they can fire out to four times my infantry's range, but just because they can fire that far doesn't mean they should. If you want these cannons to do any damage, you have to wait to fire until... They are all up in your grill, dog.
And now, a quick demonstration on just how bad being in no defense terrain is when getting attacked. Just a reminder, my squad is still poorly trained and using okay weapons at best. That first brigade got decimated. As in, it lost 10% of its total size, because I know how to use that word. I don't want the skirmishers firing at the group approaching from the north, as that may convince them to turn around, and I'd much rather ambush them in the northern fjord, so they get to rejoin the parent formation. With the first reinforcements arriving, let's describe this hill. I am pausing the game so I can make sure my forces get into the correct locations and also giving my guys the sprint command as that will mean they arrive in location just in time to meet the enemy vanguard.
The defensive spot here has bonuses that aren't worth it. Unlike Newport News, even if you do get charged into melee, it's just not worth occupying. The enemy force that approaches is going to consist of a couple cavalry, a couple skirmishers, a couple cannon batteries, a supply wagon, a general, and five brigades of infantry, each at or above 2,000 men. To face them, we only have the two thousand-man infantry brigades and two batteries that just showed up, one more smaller infantry brigade that will show up in a bit, a general, and our own supply wagon. To put it mildly, the stage isn't so much about holding this hill as it is knowing when to abandon it. However, it is a really good place to set up for now, as we can cause some significant casualties thanks to it being a hill and due to this farm. The setup I prefer to hold this area is to first split off a skirmisher from both infantry, and then to place everyone like this. The arrangement of B's brigade in the farm is key, as if you align him just right, he'll get the full 100% cover bonus. Also, I pack the cannons up really close to the infantry. This does mean they will take constant collateral damage, but it's worth it for the close range backup they will provide. And pay, they aren't our cannons anyway. Once in position, give everyone the hold ground command, as it would be an absolute travesty if B turned to face one of the opponents and gets shot in the back by 5,000 guys for his trouble. Now that there is a cavalry behind me, I need to split off another skirmisher to plant in the field here and prevent an attack from the rear. Is the entire eastern force trying to cross the ford? That's unusual, but not impossible. Note that I am not trying to take this opportunity to press across the bridge and get their cannons. While I'm sure I could, that would isolate my infantry on the other side of the bridge where the enemy could come back down and nail them. I would only consider a crossing if every last enemy infantry not only crosses the river, but also gets shot at and routes north, guaranteeing they won't return in time. And even then, the first big enemy reinforcement is about to arrive. Of course, now they turn around. At least I can get a shot or two from across the river. Hampton's brigade is going to join the western force, but first I'll split some skirmishers to take the nearby field so that the guys already there can rejoin the bridge holding force. I'm pretty sure that's not crossable territory, cheaters. And here, the Union is demonstrating how not to cavalry.
while rare, sometimes one of the enemy western infantry decides it would rather be on the east side. It is imperative that your main force, especially your cannon group, doesn't get hit in the backside, so sending an intercept force against them is key. Didn't mean to actually melee a group 15 times my size there. Not the worst possibility though, as I can get them back, and that meant my regular infantry didn't take a blasting. To prevent skirmishers from possibly shattering, it's a good idea to have them reform with the main group once they fall to half strength, and pop out a fresh batch with more men. What the heck are these cannons doing? Well, I'm not gonna let them get away with this maneuver.
locating the skirmishers here so that B's skirms can reinforce their parent group. Our casualties here are mounting. I mean, not as much as the opponents, but still. Withdraw to Henry Hill. General, it seems the enemy outnumber us. We must retreat and reorganize our forces. Henry Hill is a good place to form our defensive line. General Jackson is moving up with fresh troops to help us. Stop the enemy offensive. Do not lose this hill or our flank will collapse and we will be forced to withdraw to Richmond. Our second set of reinforcements are here. I'm going to pause the game as I align them in the wheat fields and the forest so that ideally any approach will end up engaging them when the Union troops are in the river. Also, this is now your fallback point. While you want, ideally, to hold the bridge until every last enemy is gone, the farm is going to need to evacuate eventually. As I'm still holding the hill in this video, I can have the fresh troops walk up to their destination. But if I was already in retreat, I might have needed to activate Sprint to get them to their positions in time. Once the cavalry shows up, send it along the right side of the map. It's going to be what finally ends the cannons over there. At least if the enemy cannons were being smart and not setting up shop in the river north of you.
right now, my cannon battery has been reduced to 227 men due to collateral damage. The way artillery works in this game is that it takes 25 men per cannon, but as long as one of those 25 men still lives, their cannon continues to function. So my battery started at 250 men, and as long as they don't fall to 225, they still have 10 cannons in operation. But as they were teetering on the brink now, I'm sliding them back a bit to stop the collateral damage and try to preserve that 10th cannon. Okay, so this is happening. Apparently the Union have mastered the brigade-sized Levioso spell, and is floating across the river to attack me from the side. At least I have a brigade in position to meet them, though I'm going to have to pull the skirmishers to cover said brigade from the Northern Cavalry while doing so. Based on the damage they took from that volley, either they aren't where the game says they are, or that terrain has a wheat field level defensive bonus. I'm not really worried about my own brigade losing here, but they are going to be locked in a firefight for quite a while, and probably take a hundred casualties or two. Note to self, as soon as possible, try to get extra troops up here to speed the process along. At this point, it's time to get out of here, at least for now. I'm going to have an infantry brigade take up position in the woods, and the remaining skirmisher occupy the defensive point while the rest of my forces run to the fallback point. And by the rest of my forces, I mean everyone else but the general, because I forgot to click on him. Oops.
With the retreat covered, I'll send B's unit to head into the other farm just northeast of him. I'm sure having an infantry behind enemy lines will prove useful in about one game hour. Wonderful. Now our cavalry thinks they are Pegasi. Bull Run River is cursed, yo. Counterattack. General, the Union is severely weakened and now we can counterattack with our fresh reinforcements that will arrive shortly. Concentrate the attack on their right flank and drive them right back to Washington. Our final reinforcements are here, five infantry brigades sized about 1,000 apiece. I'm going to send one around the left side. One I'm going to have head behind the stone bridge area, and the other three will start walking towards the center where I'll figure out how to use them when they arrive.
Why, hello there! This bridge can't be in good shape.
We are largely in mop-up mode now, as I am surrounding the last of the Union forces. Let me break out the good old fast-forward tool to save us some time as I finish off our opponents and push everyone else towards the northwest. I'm going to resume normal speed now so that everyone can watch as I commit what might be considered a minor war crime. Just as in Newport News, any force that isn't mine, but happens to fall in combat, I have a chance to loot the equipment from. As this stage's victory is now a foregone conclusion, I'll take this opportunity to have the four allied cannon batteries charge the enemy infantry in melee combat. I mean, I've watched enough anime to know that the most effective use of a cannon is to pick it up and swing it at your opponents. Why waste this opportunity?
And now that the profitable yet suicidal stupidity is over, time for some actual tactics. I'll accelerate time again as I press the remaining brigades towards the map wall. As Sun Tzu said, when you surround an army, leave an outlet free. Do not press a desperate foe too hard. This game is definitely one where you want to take that advice to heart. If you totally surround an enemy force, it will do a little dance looking for an exit while it gets whittled down, but eventually it will slide towards one of the units surrounding it and engage it in melee, retreating through it and out the other side. Granted, it will hurt said surrounded force hard to do this, but enemies being heavily hurt isn't as good as being totally eliminated. So a better choice is to leave them an avenue of escape towards something they can't run through, a river or map border. Press them from the backside into a literal wall, then have one side of your maneuver be open, but have that opening lead to a hard corner. Once there, not only can you box them in, but you can do it with a far smaller number of forces, leaving the rest of your army to head elsewhere, or, if desired, stand at gun's reach behind the front line, so that if the opponents do end up getting into melee with the front line, there's a second line to make them pay for it. Another demonstration of why 4 reconnaissance points is nice to have. Right now, I can see that the enemy has about 1800 troops remaining. As they have 3 brigades of roughly 600 size right in front of me, that means I now know there isn't a random enemy that managed to escape to some remote corner of the map. If it wasn't for this intel, I'd start scattering half my forces to try and locate them rather than just end this.
victory. And once again, a 4 to 1 casualty rate, with very little of those losses being my own troops. This will be the last time I get to say that for a while, since starting next stage, the majority, if not all, of the CSA forces on map will be my own army, but I'll take it while I can get it. Total losses to my four brigades, 716 men, and I even managed to save all my cannons since I lost less than 25 men in my battery. Crocker, Sully, and Siegfried all earned themselves a promotion. Good job, guys. Oh hey, I rescued nine six-pounders. Man, it sure was a shame what happened to their crews. And I got 450-odd Palmettos, the game's premier melee musket. Not nearly enough to put to use yet, but it's a start. And one more piece of good news. Brigadier General Thomas Stonewall Jackson has decided to join my troop. So ends the first grand battle even if it wasn't that much larger than the side battles fought so far. That won't last too much longer, though next stage is going to be one of the game's breather stages. Well, if you know how to run it anyway, which I'll show you how to do next video.